everybody. Welcome to Sip and Sync with Azure. My name is Matt, and today I am joined by one of my bestest friends in the whole wide world, Cindy. Cindy, I heard we're going to talk about something super cool today, and that's voice with AI. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, absolutely. And um, uh, looking forward to just unpacking like, the conversation and just kind of seeing where, where it takes us. Um, for starters, my name is Cindy Wong, and I'm currently a global black belt um, focused on specializing in Azure apps innovation. And um, I personally had the privilege of helping a lot of customers uh, across industries to work on and develop um, intelligent voice solutions. And today, we're just going to walk you through and trying to kind of uh, get, to the, get to the bottom of it. Cool. Yeah, so uh, fill me in on what is all involved with building voice AI. Absolutely. Um, so for starters, I think it's worth mentioning um, just maybe on uh, touching upon the distinction between uh, AI agents and AI automations a bit, because we feel like it also in this in the in the in a voice field or in the field in the domain of voice, there also seem to be um, a lot of um, uh, discussions around what the distinction may be uh, between the two, and folks often got confused about you know. Um, what are agents and what are uh, what do you mean by agents and what do you mean by uh, building automations? Yeah. So the really um, the kind of the overarching distinction there is that um, agents usually bear um, autonomy and agency, and it's really there to kind of a smart enough sort of like assistant light uh, like um, so applications that are there to sort of carry out tasks on its own, versus automations are usually um, rigidly defined workflows, and um, um, compared to agents, they are usually more cost efficient because okay. um, you will only just interject AI uh, where possible. Okay, so agents. I'm gonna I'm gonna step back just real quick. Agents are smart enough to do it by themselves. They're they're smart. Where automations are, they're going to be rigidly defined. So if we know what's going to happen already or what we want to have happen, we're going to do it in an automation. Where but where if we aren't really sure, we want the AI to make decisions by itself. Agents are the way to go. That be fair to say? Oh, that's that's a fair statement. Cool. So, what are some use cases for AI agents then? Do, do let's dive into one of them. A lot of cost, a lot of the customers that we were fortunate enough to work with um, are in the contact center or customer uh, service space, where um, a common prob, a common use case that do that does come up for them is sort of on uh, you know the quality assur assurance of how their human agents uh, are performing by having conversations with their customers. So uh, kind of by that, um, just kind of drilling down into the call center operations, um, kind of a um, uh, kind of popular use case that we've seen there is on uh, post-call analytics. So where uh, folks or our customers kind of spend time to kind of get in a uh, dip, drill into the quality of the conversations. They got to kind of see the sentiment of from those conversations will actually, without actually diving too much deep in. Um, and it's also like a nice way to kind of get uh, useful insights from that. And um, you know what? It's actually pretty easy to build that on Azure. Um, nice. And if you, there are ways that where you can build it on your own, or you can also leverage an existing service, um, an existing Azure service where you can just um, see how the use case plays um, live. Oh, cool. So what are some of the, the Azure services that we would use for that? Well, um, let's, let's walk it through together. Oh, great. Yeah, thank you. And as you can see, um, this service is called Azure AI Content Understanding. And what really is happening right now is that uh, we have a call analytics use case where we kind of start by defining the project. We define uh, kind of, we kind of uh, delineate where the data is being connected with to, and you just kind of decide where it's kind of being connected there. Then you kind of move on and upload uh, the audio data or the kind of audio feed that you are working with. And then um, with a simple click, few clicks, you just get a very insightful sort of summaries on what's happening and the conversations, entity extractions, and all of the nice stuff. Um, so over here, uh, for example, where you can just kind of see, um, have a better view of uh, things like, or insights such as call summary, the overall sentiment of that conversation, uh, categories, or the kind of the topics of uh, what the conversations are about, are about and any complaints uh, or any kind of entities or companies um, that are mentioned uh, throughout. Oh, that's super, super neat. So you're, what we're doing here in this service is that we are just uploading some, some uh, audio files, and it's going through kind of giving us a, a whole summary of what was in that exactly. file. And it's just telling this was positive, this was negative, 
and any companies that were mentioned too. So that's cool. I mean, so like you can be talking about Microsoft and we're going to say, all right, I want to then talk or we're talking about maybe a supplier um, in it so we can know maybe that's the issue. The supplier is yeah. the issue. Yeah, that's a great example there. Um, and um, the data or the entities that are, can be identified there are not just limited to organizations. So think about the common sort of personable, um, the common PII data. So think about maybe uh, celebrities' names or uh, phone numbers, any or addresses, mm -hmm. um, quantities. So all those are uh, pretty easy to extract and also pretty easy to uh, surface out as well. Oh, that's super cool. That's really neat. Now. Cindy, I heard you when we were up ordering our coffees. I heard that you were talking about voice retrieval augmented generation. So you have a couple more minutes to tell me just a little bit about that. Oh, of course. And uh, that's a that's a pretty uh, interesting uh, motion that we've seen start to see more customers start to adopt, where uh, as opposed to the traditional medium of um, trying to interact with their applications through text, now we're seeing more and more customers start to kind of explore what's possible with voice. And this is really where uh, that comes from. So instead of prompting uh, sort of like to a chatbot-like application, uh, majority mostly through text. Now you can actually just maybe talk to your application and the system will actually be capable or uh, be able to respond to you back in real time uh, or close to real time in voice. I love that. So that's so cool. So that's like up and coming. We have the capability right now to build an application like that. So Matt, assuming I know how to program, which is doubtful for me, you can just ask people on my team, could build that today if I wanted to. If you wanted to, exactly. Um, so services that can help you with there on Azure are um, just not limited to those. Azure Speech, Azure as Speech, um, Azure Functions, Logic Apps. So those are also pretty useful if you want to sort of build up automations right after uh, those workflows. But really, it's what, I, what you think will drive the most value for your business. And um, if you do think that there's a value to design it with voice, then here are the services that you can start with. Awesome. Well, Cindy, thank you very much. I learned a lot. I'm actually going to go ahead and try to build some of this myself. We're going to put all the links that for everything that you saw to everything into the show notes. And Cindy, thank you very much. This has been Sip and Sync with Azure. Catch you all next time.